Hello, here's your video on reference angles. So after you're done watching the video, you should be able to find reference angles. And reference angles will be super, super important uh, once we start working with the unit circle. So first, what is a reference angle? It's the smallest angle that the terminal side of a given angle makes with the x-axis. So we have four quadrants. So depending on the quadrant you're in, um, you're going to do certain things to find the reference angle. So here is your initial side of your angle and here's an angle in the first quadrant. There's your theta. Um, quadrant two, here's my initial side, there's my terminal side, there's my angle, theta. Quadrant three, initial and terminal side, there's my angle. And quadrant four, initial side, terminal side, and there's my angle. So your reference angle, I always like to call them little wedges. So your reference angle is always resting against the x-axis and it's the, it's the wedge that's in between your angle and the x-axis. I'm actually going to jump to quadrant two to explain this. Um, so this angle right here in blue, that's your reference angle. So it's the little wedge that it makes with the x-axis. It is always against the x-axis, because that's part of the definition. Always against the x-axis, never the y-axis. For quadrant two, your reference angle is this angle. Sorry, I said quadrant two, I meant quadrant three. So it's the little wedge um, that your angle makes with the x-axis. And for quadrant four, your reference angle is this angle right here. Okay, again, always against the x-axis. Now, the reason why I skipped quadrant 1 is because the smallest angle that an angle makes with quadrant 1 with the x-axis is actually the original angle to begin with. So whenever you have an angle in the first quadrant, that angle is also the reference angle because it's um, the smallest angle with the terminal side um, with the x-axis. Okay, so it's always these little wedges against the x-axis. So let's do some examples. Um, letter A. So the first thing you need to do is actually draw the angle. Just sketch out where it would be. So 25 degrees would be this angle right here. And the reason why you want to sketch out the angle is because your angle measurement, or the quadrant that you're in, will determine how you find the reference angle. So your reference angle for 25 degrees, since it's in that first quadrant, is also going to be 25 degrees. So we do theta r for reference angle. So your reference angle is 25 degrees. For 324 degrees, I'm going to sketch out where my angle is. So 324 degrees is in the fourth quadrant. So that angle measurement is 324 degrees and this right here is your reference angle. Now what I need to figure out since a full rotation is 360 degrees I need to figure out how big that wedge is. So what I can do to find the reference angle is I can take 360 degrees minus the 324. So the visual will help you figure out um, how you can find the reference angle. So in this case, since a full rotation is 360, I need to figure out how much extra I need to go from 324 to get to 360. So 360 minus 324 is 36 degrees. So your reference angle is 36 degrees. Now, negative angles, negative angles, you can find a positive coterminal angle first. So I'm going to go ahead and take negative 100 plus 360 because that will help me figure out what quadrant that's in. That's 270 degrees. No, it's not. That's 260 degrees. I read my calculator wrong. So when I graph 260 degrees, that's in my third quadrant. So that's from here to here. Now, my reference angle is this little wedge. So that's what I need to figure out. So what happened for 260 is I initially went 180 degrees and then this piece extra 
to get to 260 degrees. So that little extra piece is actually the reference angle. So what I can do to find my reference angle in the third quadrant is I can take my original angle and subtract 180 degrees. So I need to figure out how much further I went past um, the x-axis to get my reference angle. So 260 minus 180 is 80 degrees. So my reference angle is 80 degrees. This is why it's important to actually draw the angles because there's no like one set way to solve your reference angles. It's going off of the visual. Now 520 degrees is bigger than a full rotation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a coterminal angle again. So anytime you have an angle that's, that's negative or an angle that's bigger than 360, you want to find the coterminal angle so you can figure out where to draw it. So 520 minus 360 is 160 degrees. So now when I draw 160 degrees, that's in my second quadrant. That's this over here. And I need to figure out what this wedge is, because that's my reference angle. So to figure out my wedge, I need to figure out how much further I need to go from 160 to 180. So I can take 180 minus 160 degrees. So your reference angle is 20 degrees. Your reference angle should always be an acute angle, meaning that it should be between 0 and uh, 90 degrees. So again, draw a picture, because it will help you figure out um, what it is that you're going to do to actually figure out the measure. So that's working with degrees. Let's go ahead and work with radians. So radians are a little tricky if you're not super familiar with them. But again, in terms of radians, this is 0. Pi over 2 is 90 degrees. Uh, pi is 180. And 3 pi over 2 is 270. And 2 pi is 360. So it's important to know that. That way you can figure out um, which quadrant that you are in. Now what I don't want you to do is I don't want you to take all of these radians and convert them to degrees. You can if you really, really want to, but I do want you to get used to uh, working with the radian measure instead of having to always convert back and forth. So 5 pi over 4. Okay, 5 pi over 4 is bigger than pi, right? Because pi is 1 pi, and then 5 pi over 4, well 5 over 4 is 1.25 pi. So that puts us in the third quadrant. So this right here is 5 pi over 4. So since I am in the third quadrant, here's my reference angle. It's that little wedge sitting against the x-axis. So what I've done is I've gone past 180 degrees or I've gone past pi radians. So I need to figure out what this little extra piece is. So to find my reference angle, since I've gone too far, going past the pi radians, I'm going to take my 5 pi over 4 and subtract pi. So 5 pi over 4 minus pi is pi over 4. And that's your reference angle. You can use a calculator if you want to. If you struggle with fractions, it's 5 fourths minus 1, which will give you 1 fourth. All right, pi over 7, you can go ahead and draw that out. Um, so pi over 7 is going to be in this first quadrant because it's basically 1 seventh of pi, and pi is all the way over here, so 1 seventh of that would be in the first quadrant. So my reference angle is this little wedge over here. Since I'm in my first quadrant, my reference angle is the same thing as my original angle. All right, negative 2 pi over 3. I'm going to go ahead and find a positive coterminal angle. So I'm going to add 2 pi, since that's a full rotation in radians. So negative 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi is 4 pi over 3. Okay, so 4 pi over 3 
when I draw that, 4 pi over 3 is past pi. And that's going to put us in the third quadrant again. Oops, wrong color. Now I need to figure out how far past um, my pi I've gone to get to my 4 pi over 3. So for my reference angle to figure out this little wedge, I'm going to take 4 pi over 3 minus pi. So your reference angle is pi over 3. Okay, 13 pi over 8. So 13 pi over 8, I need to figure out what quadrant that's in. And then over here I have pi and 2 pi. Now I'm actually going to change these radian measures in terms of 8. So pi is the same thing as 8 pi over 8. Right, because 8 over 8 reduces to 1. 2 pi is the same thing as 16 pi over 8. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I need to figure out where 13 pi over 8 is closer to. Well, 13 pi over 8 is closer to 16 pi over 8 than it is to 8 pi over 8. So that puts this angle measurement in the fourth quadrant. So this right here is your reference angle. Since I'm in the fourth quadrant, I need to figure out how much further I need to go to get to 2 pi, because that's 360. So for my reference angle, I'm going to take 2 pi minus the 13 pi over 8. So 2 pi is 16 pi over 8, which we've already established, minus 13 pi over 8. So my reference angle is 3 pi over 8. So just like your reference angle in degrees has to be acute, so it has to be less than 90 degrees, your reference angle in radians has to be less than pi over 2 radians, because pi over 2 is the same thing as 90 degrees. Alright, so that concludes your lesson on reference angles.